The ultimate goal is to find the set of weights, the WIJs, that results in the lowest possible prediction error. So we have to minimize some measure of error. But before we can minimize it, we have to define exactly what error means in a way we can quantify, which brings us to a crucial metric, mean the square error, or MSC. Let's start with just an instantaneous measurement. For a single training example, let's call it N, and a single output neuron, IJ, the instantaneous error signal is just defined as uh, DJ of N minus YJ of N. The desired response minus the actual signal, what we wanted minus what we got. Simple subtraction. But we want a total error for the whole network on that one example. This is the instantaneous error energy, which we call E of N. Okay. We calculate this by summing up the square of those individual errors across all the output neurons, and we multiply it by one half. So E of Fn equals one half times the sum of Ej squared. Why the square term and why the one half? The squaring I get, it makes everything positive. The squaring is essential, yeah. We don't care if we were too high or too low, just how far off we were. And it also has a nice side effect of penalizing big errors much more aggressively than small ones. It makes the network fix its biggest mistakes first. Right. But the one half, that always seemed a bit random to me. Is it just for mathematical neatness? Honestly, yes. When we get to gradient descent, we have to take the derivative of this error function. And the derivative of x squared is 2x. Ah, so the 2 cancels out the one half. 2 cancels out the one half. It's an algebraic trick to keep the calculus clean and avoid carrying around a constant factor in all the final equations. That's a great explanation. Okay, so EON is just for one example. We need a cost function that covers the entire data set in. That's where the average error energy, or what's sometimes called the empirical risk, comes in. This is the metric we actually want to minimize. It's just the average of that instantaneous error energy across all N training examples. So this average error is now a single number that tells us how good or bad the network is. It's the target we're trying to drive down to zero. And crucially, this average error is a function of all the adjustable synaptic weights in the entire network. Finding the minimum of this function is the same as finding the best possible set of weights. So how do we decide when to adjust those weights based on the error? Two main methods, 